Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 14 in the authentication module titled 2FA Bypass Using a Brute Force Attack. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in, so to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy, select All Labs, do a search on Authentication Labs, and then select Lab number 14, titled 2FA Bypass Using a Brute Force Attack. All right, let's get started. This lab's two-factor authentication is vulnerable to brute forcing. You have already obtained a valid username and password, but do not have access to the user's 2FA verification code. To solve the lab, brute force the 2FA code and access Carlos's account page. Victim's credentials are Carlos and Montoya. And then we've got a note right over here saying, as the verification code will reset while you're running your attack, you may need to repeat this attack several times before you succeed. This is because the new code may be a number that your current intruder attack has already attempted. Okay, so the target goal over here is to brute force the 2FA code and access Carlos's account. And we're assuming that there was a breach of the application or other applications that Carlos uses and his password was dumped on the internet. And so we gained access to Carlos's password, but we don't have his 2FA token. And so we need to exploit the application in order to obtain Carlos's 2FA token and then log into his account. All right, let's access the lab. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp. And so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. I am using the professional version because we will need to use the intruder functionality and the macro functionality in Burp, which are not available or heavily throttled in the community edition. And so you do need the professional version to complete this exercise or write your own script that performs the automated attack for you. All right, the first thing we're going to do is log into Carlos's account. So we're going to click on my account, Carlos, and the password was Montoya, hit login, and you're presented with a four digit security code. So let's go back to Burp. The request that we just performed is a post request right over here. Let's send this to repeater. And then the get request that was responsible for sending the four digit code was this one. Let's send this one to repeater. Okay, now let's put in a random four digit security code. Click login, and it says insecure security code. So let's send this request to repeater and I'm sending all the requests just in case I need to analyze them later for any vulnerabilities. Let's put in another random security code, hit login. Okay, so this is interesting. After two incorrect codes, it sends you to the login page. Let's log in again and see if we got locked out. So Montoya, hit login. And we didn't get logged out, so let's put in an incorrect Security code again, so that's another attempt. An incorrect security code again. Another attempt and we got logged out. Okay, so there is no lockout mechanism over here, 
what the developers thought was if they log you out, that means that's an efficient lockout mechanism. However, any script kitty or an attacker, what they could do is just automate the attack of logging in, trying two attempts, and then logging in again, trying another two attempts, and then logging in again, and trying two attempts until they brute force the 2FA code. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to go to settings right over here, and then we're going to go to sessions. Now accessing this interface might be different depending on the version of Burp that you're using, but the names at the tabs are the same. So we're going to click on add right over here, and then we're going to go to scope and say include all URLs. So now the macro that we're going to write that performs this login and then tries two attempts and then performs the login again and tries two attempts is going to be applied on the target tool, the intruder tool, the scanner tool, the sequencer tool, and the repeater tool. And our attack will be performed in the intruder tool, so this is great. Let's go back to details, click on add under rule actions, and then run a macro. Select add over here and what we're going to do is select all the requests that we need in order to perform our attack. So the first one is the get login request. So let's go down. It would be this one right over here. So if we go down right over here, this one gets us our login page. Now we need the post login request where we put in our username and password, which is this one over here. If you're using a Mac in order to select both options, you need to click on the command and control buttons. And then the third request is the get login to page, which generates our token, which is this one right over here. All right, let's click on OK. So far, so good. So this gets us our login page. This logs into the account, and then this generates the token for us. So let's click on test macro over here to see if it works. Perfect. So we get a 200 OK when we receive the login page and then we are able to successfully log in using our credentials. And then over here, it generates the token for us. All right, let's click OK, click OK, click OK, click OK again. And then let's close this over here and then go to the post login to endpoint and send this one to intruder. All right, so what we're essentially gonna do is brute force this token right over here. However, because we set a macro, what's going to happen is our macro will run every time we perform a request over here, which means we try an MFA code and then we log in again, and then we try another MFA code and then we log in again, and then we try another MFA code, and then we log in again. This way we bypass the insecure quote unquote lockout that they had where they would log us out every time we try to incorrect attempts. So we're gonna clear this and then just add the MFA code as a parameter. We'll keep this as sniper, and then we go to payloads, brute forcer, and it's just integer, so let's remove this. And then we'll keep minimum length at four and maximum length at four. And the request count is 10,000. Now for resource pool over here, we do need a maximum cur current request of one, just because it logs us out if we do two incorrect ones. And so you don't want it to keep getting logged out. So what you're gonna do is just perform one request at a time. And this looks good. So just like they said over here, we might need to perform this multiple times because we are generating a new token every time. However, if we're lucky, we're able to brute force it on the first try. So let's look over here. This looks good. Let's click on start attack. Now we are performing 10,000 requests with one thread, so one request at a time. And so depending on which token they use, it might take a very long time to complete this exercise. So we're gonna click on status right over here and just monitor to see if there's a 302 code. And then we could pause the attack just so that we don't have to go through 10,000 uh, requests. But if the code is one of the bottom ones, so the last ones that this attack is going to try, then you might need to wait close to an hour to complete this exercise. So we'll see. I'll pause the video and then resume it when we do get our valid code. All right, and we're back. So you could see over here less than 
a quarter way through the attack, we got a 302 status code, which means that we were able to brute force the MFA code. And it's this one right over here. If we look at the response, this is the authenticated session token of the user. So let's copy this. Go back to the application. Right click, inspect. Go to application. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Under cookies over here, let's just remove everything. So delete this one, delete this one. And then for this one over here, put in the authenticated session token. Hit enter and let's just go to the main page of the application. Now this should be the Carlos page. So if we go on my account over here, you can see we've logged in as the Carlos user and we get the congratulations you solved the lab message. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability using a burp macro and intruder. We usually script the exercise in Python. However, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise. It's just a simple for loop that performs the four requests 10,000 times until you get a 302 redirect, just like we did with intruder. All right, this completes the exercise. I'll see you in the next video. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.